Hello, everybody. Here we are. I have the Enceladosaurus on remote. Are you there? Hi. She's totally there. Okay, Hi. and we're doing our C as an additional language. So uh, tonight we're going to be doing topic six, which is the new topic six, because the old topic six, that was just a bridge too far. And uh, we're going to be doing um, file IO tonight in uh, using using C standard IO stuff. So for those of you who were here earlier for the refactoring, like Nathaniel, I am sorry, we decided at the last minute not to go with that code. There was sort of a insidious last minute bug. And I think, Ah, let's let's focus on the learning stuff. So let, let I'll I'll hold that back uh, with the refactor for uh, next week's session. So, anyway, in the meantime, uh, yeah, let's let's do. I, and I actually, you saw it. I rolled that twenty. That totally happened. <laughs> so, I'm still in shock about that. So yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get our let's get our setup set up. All right. So we have a little bit of fun. Well, all right, I made that up for you, but here's our regular interface. And um, of course, uh, Jessie's going to be following along with some of this or the stream or however she wants to do that. And uh, we have a little bit of stuff to go over. So let me, let me, I got the glove on, so we're ready to whiteboard. All right. Or as Nightshade Dude loves to pick on me for blackboard. <laughs> all right. So files, what are files? Jesse? Oh, you're asking me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We have the wonder of all this interactivity, so. <laughs> uh, data that's stored in memory. Yeah, uh, so memory is the fun part of that definition. So specifically when we're talking about files, we mean kind of like like data at rest. If you will. Yeah, like like hard drive memory, not. Yeah, um, it could be a hard drive. It could be a tape. It could be that's in the era that a lot of these functions were written. It was usually tapes, <laughs> so All right. that'll that'll help you with a little perspective on why some of these functions will seem a little crazy. But um, that that actually kind of really quickly touches on the difference between something that's random access and something which is seek based. So um, this random access is sort of like this data at rest, but you can kind of jump to any point within that file. So at any moment you could just say, okay, just start at like byte 3725 and read in the next meg, you know, like, like that, just take that and map it into memory. And so that's like, I can jump anywhere I want. I can then jump back to like location, five, I could go five bytes in, I could go five gigs in, you know, like, so that, that random means that I can jump anywhere I want. Seeking means that I have to get there. So this is really more of the notion of like a tape, you know, and if you think back then it was usually a magnetic reel, I'm going to guess back in, back in the day. <laughs> and, you know, you had your reel and, you know, this was like some sort of magnet, you know, stuff. <laughs> There's really nice physics description of what's going on there. <laughs> so, um, and in order to be able to jump anywhere in this file, you had to actually like physically wind this thing and that would physically wind this thing. So that's annoying, <laughs> right? Because there's actually a physical thing that's happening as we're sort of like twisting around here. And, and that action we refer to as seeking. Now, Pretty much everything that's built into STDIO that we're going to be using for files, which we're using the standard input output, is seek based. It's not random based. <laughs> so, so you have this sort of implicit notion whenever you open up a file, you've got something associated with it, which is where. Okay, and this is this is kind of like more formally called your file pass, but this is this is like where you where the tape is like in this particular file so i can read ahead and when i read ahead the tape moves and i get the bytes that were there and i read them into memory and that's all cool and i can also rewind and i can say yeah go back and um, you know move the file position negative versus moving the po file position positive so you always have to keep in mind that when you're reading you don't 
with with standard io you don't get to jump around directly like you actually have to send in commands and say i want you to go to this place or i want i've already consumed this input like whenever you read something you're implicitly moving the tape so if i have a file and not in a tape sense but keep in mind tapes are where this was built <laughs> so if i've got a file and it says something like you know i don't know nc and then it says uh some guy and then it says Nathaniel Bumpo and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right <laughs> but um, as I read each one of these things off the file position is kind of moving forward so it sort of starts off here at position zero and as I start reading this stuff and assuming these things are separated by new lines then I consume that part of the file so it's like I'm gonna read this thing and then the file is going to point here for the file position. And then I'm going to read this thing. So here I read NC and here I read SG and here I read Nathaniel. And as I'm reading it, I'm consuming it off. It's sort of like this, this tape, keep this tape analogy in mind, because that's literally what it was. <laughs> okay. So that, does that make sense? What do you mean by it's consumed? That almost oh. sounds like it's not, it's somehow being erased. Sorry, uh, I'm using a kind of more modern term. So we we have um, data we can think of as either being consumed or produced in, in this flat model of the world. <laughs> so um, I could either be a producer, this, this could be like something like a text editor or a detector off a satellite. You know, it's, it's just something that creates data. And a consumer is something that reads data. Okay. And in this case, like the notion of consuming really means moving the file position. It means like, it means pulling this thing in, this array of bytes, array of uh, characters, and moving the file position forward. So it might be physically moving a tape. It might be turning a hard drive to a, a particular position where that file is stored and moving it forward, seeking forward or back. Um, it could be, you know, it could be a piece of memory which is acting like a file in memory mapped world. We don't know what the underlying medium is and as C programmers, we're supposed to not care. <laughs> so okay. standard IO tries to say, look, what's standard of all these different access methods? Like, well, look, there's a place where you are you can consume stuff and you can produce things if you want to write to it, but that's it, right? You know, like producing or consuming moves the file position. And if you want to explicitly like go backwards, like rewind the tape, you have to send in like a seek command. You have to say like, okay, go backwards. Cool? Yeah, I think okay. so. <laughs> At the end of every file, we have a magic marker. And we call that magic marker EOF. Probably something you didn't see in Python because Python just does it for you. <laughs> Python very much has this notion of EOF, but it 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 just kind of magically handles it for you most of the time. What is EOF? This is the end of file. And bad things happen when you seek past it. So if you try to send in another consumption request, like you say, like I want to do another read, but I've already hit the end of the file. What are you going to read? Uh, yeah, you're breaking the analogy, right? Yeah. <laughs> now C has no problem. It'll go, yeah, sure, I'll do that. You want me to do another read? Fine. Here's what's it going to do on the tape? It's just you're going to be reading someone else's file. <laughs> I yeah, mean, <laughs> like it's just going to be whatever happens to be stored in the next set of bytes. And hard drives, yeah, I mean, before operating systems would sort of protect against this case, which they do now, you could just read other stuff. You know, who knows what data you're going to get if you just keep on reading. So it's like a potential security problem. Oh, it apps the, the old, the old operating systems were all security problems. That's pretty much all they are. But, um, so we need to be careful about this end of file. These days, you're just going to usually just crash your program. Like I said before, if you're lucky, it crashes. And if you're unlucky, you don't know that you have a problem and you ship it and you find out from your users later. <laughs> so, right. Okay, cool. That's the file view of the world. So we know that we are going to be using a seek based, and actually I'm going to just back up because we're changing slides, we're changing colors. You like green, right? I do. Okay, so 
we've got a seek based this is kind of a C green I guess <laughs> so um, we've got a seek based IO scheme so in our world um, we're worried about like if we're writing to the file we're probably doing output uh, that's by the way this is input output right? yep just assuming that everyone knows that but that's probably not a bad good assumption <laughs> <laughs> maybe everyone here knows that um, so output we're, we're sort of writing it somewhere we're producing in a sense and io and i we're doing input we're sort of consuming in a sense so we can consume a file which doesn't have that notion like in the real world like i consumed a snack and it's no longer available <laughs> right? yeah that's what um, i got worried about like oh. so that that sometimes is true by the way like in the case where you're using a seek on say a network stream well you can't really seek on a network stream so like if somebody's like writing to you on a network they're producing data it's showing up on the network and you can consume it but as soon as you consume it it's gone yeah like it's you can't read the network again right you know it's mm -hmm. like it's there's new data there now <laughs> so that's 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 part of the reason we use these terms produce and consume um Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need a little data structure which is associated with um, sort of the operational burden of dealing with this thing and of, of dealing with a file. And we call that the file uh, structure. And I'm not gonna get into structures for the moment, but basically just think of it as kind of a collection of variables that are related. <laughs> so we're gonna have a file and we're gonna have a pointer because we learned about pointers before. We don't want to copy all that stuff around. We can just use it once and that's good. Um, and we're going to assign that, like this is going to be some sort of like file handle. Now you can name your variables how you want and see they're typically short and non-descriptive just to confuse you. <laughs> that's kind of what we talked about before that, uh, you know, it was hard to write, so it should be hard to read. <laughs> that sort of evil world. <laughs> um, so. What operations are we gonna to get to deal with files? Well, there's a couple basic ones. We have F open, so they all start with F for file. <laughs> so F open, F close, probably not a big surprise that this opens a file and this closes it. <laughs> so um, don't try closing a file that's not open. Don't try opening a file that you don't have permission to. You're going to get all sorts of errors. And in a lot of bad cases, like I said, you know, if you're lucky, then these things will sort of return in some sense that something bad happened. And mm -hmm. something bad happening is typically null. So you can usually test like to see like, all right, did this thing open correctly? I would have gotten a pointer, otherwise I'll get null. So if it returns, null is mapped, by the way, to zero. So it's just the number zero. So if the number, if your file pointer, which is supposed to have a bunch of stuff in it, is zero, then you know something went wrong, <laughs> probably. So most of them are gonna follow that convention. Okay, um, now you're already familiar with printf. Mm -hmm. It's a way of printing stuff in a formatted fashion and it defaults to printing it out on what's called standard output. Now, we didn't mention standard out, but that's basically kind of like the first, there's a couple files you get for free with every Unix program. <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. that's, that's standard output is what I've redirected to the web console. So that's actually what you're seeing. Yep, yep. There's, Python. there's also a standard error, and that's the reason you didn't get error messages before, because I only had standard output and I didn't have standard error. <laughs> so when we would compile something and get an error, it would show up here on standard error and we wouldn't see it because it wasn't in the web UI. It is now, though, because the world is better. Yay. <laughs> okay, well, it turns out there's an F file equivalent of this. So there's an F printf. F <laughs> okay. And it does pretty much the same thing that printf does, except to a file. <laughs> so per, for most of these file functions, they're all gonna take a file pointer as their first parameter. So this is gonna be something like that, and then all the normal stuff that you're used to doing for printf, like, you know, a percent %s and a new line and, you know, the string guy or something, you know? So like mm -hmm. that would work as long as this is a valid file. Now, if I write to a file that I don't have or the file's in a bad state, then 
you get to keep both pieces. So be careful about errors. <laughs> we're not going to worry. <laughs> Today we're going to be fast and loose with errors, but um, you know that's life. Um, okay, there's. I'm going to show you. There's a whole bunch of. This is your main output function. Um, there's others like f put s and you know the the. This we we didn't we never really used put s that actually is just for printing we use put care yeah I'm guessing it's it's the string version of it string yeah yeah okay. it's like this is like for percent s but there's no formatters when you're dealing with f put s it's just it only takes strings so there is an f version of it you know so pretty much all of the functions that exist in the normal library they have an f version that corresponds to them um, we didn't do anything with input because there's no scheme for you to be able to input stuff on the web yet but we are going to be writing files today, which means we can also input from them. So there is an equivalent get operation, which we are going to be using, and there's fgets. So this is really about consuming. So this is input, you know, mm -hmm. or consumption. So, and that's going to move ahead, you know, whatever file handle we pass it, it's going to, it's going to move ahead the file position. So. Keep in mind, you are seeking forward when you start reading. You are seeking forward when you start writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, man, we just got raided. Where what? is X? What's going Hi. on? Where is X? Hello, raid. How are you all doing? I'm a weeb. Okay. Oh, no. Is that, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, 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 young, my youngest brother is a weeb, so that was, oh. that was a, a, an oh, no of love. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> okay. Familiarity. Cool. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, we're just uh, we're doing a little bit of C. We're just wrapping up the lecture here, and then we're going to start coding. Actually, by we, I mean Jesse. <laughs> but the one with the blue hair will be in the hot seat. <laughs> so um, she says she hasn't programmed in a little while, so we're going to make sure she gets plenty of programming today. <laughs> Yes, please. Okay, so F get S is how we're going to start reading. It's it's sort of a line to reading lines. Um, okay. And and hello raiders and thank you Yaya for catching that. Um, so great. And when we're done with it, we're gonna close it, and that's cool. So this will be our output operation is gonna be f printf, and our input operation is gonna be f get s. And then we're gonna have that once we have it, we've done these things, we pulled it off wherever this file is, then we get it in memory somewhere. So we're good to go. Once it's in memory, we know all the things that we can do with it because it's just string stuff, right? String stuff. <laughs> is, that, is that like the coder's version of star stuff? Yeah, I think the, uh, <laughs> the correct technical definition, and maybe where is X could comment on that, but the correct technical def definition is this is just, yeah, string stuff. String stuff. Always okay. remember to flush our cache or it might clog and overflow. Yes, we're going to get to flushing in a little bit too. Okay. Um, there is a F flush, so we are... We're going to talk All about right. flushing streams. Um, the, the streams that you've had so far, namely standard input, standard output, they're kind of managed for you. So now you get to start doing the management because these are not okay. so automatic. OK, so let's cut over to our learn screen. And you all can see us. Hi, how are you doing? We're here. We're doing our things. OK, so well, All right. let's go. This is our shared. so. She's been following along up here that what you've all been seeing, and this is our shared coding window. So I'm gonna go hands off on this. All right. Oh boy. Um, now the file stuff is defined in STDIO, so you don't have to worry about it. It's already there for you. So okay. if we want to now, actually, there is one little catch. We do we did briefly look at our. Um, I didn't get the online man pages set up, so we're gonna use uh, die.net. I guess it is pronounced die, <laughs> uh, not D. I don't know if a German dude made it. <laughs> it says C sharp in the title. Oh, did I put C sharp? It says sharp C, like pound C in the title. I wasn't uh, sure if you were like, making a hashtag. No, that was a hashtag. That was, <laughs> it's, I guess it's ambiguous with like one letter. So it's, <laughs> oh, C. I, guess it, I am learning C sharp at the same time, so. But that's not this stream. That's not this stream. <laughs> that, we're, doing the, we're doing the low level C. <laughs> Okay, so um, great. Here's your, hey, what's up, Strophium? How you doing? Hey, so, speak of the devil. He's the one teaching me C-sharp, so. 
but in music format. <laughs> nice. Where is, is that? C++? And no, it's C-sharp. C C-sharp C is a reference to, it is a musical reference to for the better one because it's sharp. It's, it's above, right? You know, here's C and C-sharp would be above a C, right? <laughs> I'm playing a piece on piano right now with a lot of key changes, and so that does not give me happy feelings. Oh, <laughs> not, not in the mood for accidentals. You're not ready no. for a sharp. Okay, all right, we'll get to accidentals later. Okay, so um, <laughs> great. This is how we get things started. So we need this f open call, and there's two parameters you really have to worry about first, which is this is basically going to be the path to the file. So you specify where the file is, and this is how you want to open it. And these do correspond to the open parameters in Python, so that you're already kind of familiar with. And hey, what's up, Loafbone? Thanks for dropping by. So this will be something like, um, oh, but I just realized that's probably not coming through on your screen. So. Uh, uh, no, I've got stream up. Oh, OK. So if yeah. we do something like, um, you know, first file. OK, so we're just going to call it first file. And we're not going to say anything else. And we're going to say we're opening this thing for writing, which means that we're only allowed to do write operations on it. So yes. you try to read from it, and it'll crash if you're lucky. Bad time. OK. And because we're, I think we are using the syntax of declaring on a separate line from where we're going. So I'm going to refer to this as sort of my file handle. That's just a, it, you can call it file if you want. It, it, this is always one of those things with like variable naming I get screwed up because it's like is that the file name or the file itself what, or the I, I don't what is happening oh I'm this is the variable that I'm going to use um, to deal with this file so I'm going to open up this file and it's a pointer why uh it, because that's we looked at the man page and it said it needs a pointer oh I missed that I'm sorry yeah. yes okay it, it yes, returns yes, a pointer good. Yes. <laughs> so, sorry it's a yep. pointer because it says it it gives you a pointer. <laughs> Because it wants one. All right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do this assignment. And mm -hmm. then, because we're going to be good people, we're immediately going to close it. So we're going to write our close. And there's nothing wrong with that code at all, right? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Yes. Chat, help yes. me out. Yes. Is very, it good? very much. My save? Very much, maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah. what happens if something goes wrong when I try to open this file? Well, as you have drilled into my very thick skull, <laughs> I'm very lucky if we get an error. And You're very lucky if, if we get an error. If it's normal C Dark Souls land, then <laughs> Dark Souls land. It will just <laughs> nice. pretend to work, and I will be none the wiser. Yeah. Okay. So, what does it return in the event that this thing fails? It's going to return null. Null which yep. is zero. So I didn't test to see if it was zero. I just went ahead and closed it, assuming everything was fine, right? But it might not be fine, right? Say like I tried to open up a file that didn't exist, like I open it for reading, and I execute this. Oh, look at that. Nice little crash there. How's that for a little so, crash? You, know, you got a nice a segmentation dramatic. fault. Yeah, see, it doesn't mess around, does it? All right, just, just because I don't want to call this <laughs> file and uh, you know, because then you won't know if I mean file the type or file the, the thing. So I'm just going to call do it you FH. Not need, do you not need like a, um, a file specifier at the end? What do you mean by file specifier? Like a, a file type. Like you don't have to specify. File types? Specify what are you talking about? Windows? Or... That's like 30 years later. We're talking about any operating no, this, system. No, this is like... This is from tapes. <laughs> this is like, this is from the era of tapes. I mean, there wasn't even really file names, really. All right, okay, fine. I'll I'll just just to make you happy. We'll, we'll thank you. We'll we'll give it an extension. <laughs> thank you. We're gonna have to free your mind at some point because you're learning C now. Okay, so now if we wanted to actually check this and do it properly, what would we do? Um. So could, the, we, could we kind of, um, so I don't have the man page open, but for F You don't open, need the man page. It returns it null would, if there's a problem. Tell, yeah, yeah, if there's a problem. So that we could put a check in there or yeah. we could just have it. And by we, we mean you. Me? <laughs> Yay. Oh, boy. OK. Um, do I know how to do the thing? All right. Um, so before we close, um, let's see here. My, do, 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 do. I remember how to do this. I remember. 
Okay, I'm just gonna help you real quick. It is a zero, but let's get in the habit right now. Okay, so you, we've never done that before. Yeah, so. null, basically null is set to be zero. <laughs> there were problems. New line, new line. Yep, 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 yep. I haven't gotten there yet. Hold okay. on, hold on. I got you. Got to make okay. it muscle right. memory. Um, uh, da, 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 da. and then my little nope. And then, oh no, no, no! This is ugly land where we do this for uh -huh. some godforsaken reason that makes me sad. But you know what? We're gonna do it. Okay. Yeah, and that's the reason oh, we didn't, we don't want to f close the thing if it failed, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, that's why you're protecting it in the else. Okay, so we run that. Oh, I left another uh, bug. Because you changed, you changed yeah, the name. Yeah, I'm Hold a bad on. guy. I'm just a bad guy. Let's clear the output. And there were problems. <laughs> Good. That's better than crashing, right? You know, you're. <laughs> okay. Now let's go add this file. Error messages. Um. You want to, I'm sorry, what did you say? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add this file because right now it was an error and um, you know, because there was no file there. So let's make the file. Okay. All right. Why don't you write something into it? But if it doesn't exist, I can't write into it. Ah, I just changed its the open line. Right. What mode did I open it with? Read. Uh, no, right now. Did it not oh, update? Oh, okay. Now it's right. Yeah. Before it was read. Um, yeah. Now it's in write mode. Okay. So we're opening this thing for the purpose of writing. So we're going to produce data. So how do we produce? Onto a uh, file. F put S. F put S would be one way. We're going to use F print F. <laughs> let's use, for that, let's yeah. use the one that we're more familiar with. <laughs> uh, okay. The first parameter is always the file handle. First parameters. No, no, you're, you were good there. Um, yeah, just now you have to tell it because you're doing f printf. See, like in regular printf, you would just start your format specifier, right? Yep. And it goes to standard out. But in the case of this, now we're actually saying we're, write it out to a file. So you have to tell it what file. Hmm. Would that work? Uh, one way to find out, right? <laughs> Computers explode, tapes catch on fire. <laughs> Um, okay, we get no output because you didn't write anything in the positive case. <laughs> which is good though. Which is which, which could good. be good, or it, it could, could not. We're actually we're more like Schrodinger's cat right now, right? Like we're in a <laughs> we're in a metastable oh. state. So we <laughs> until I observe it, it it's how do we observe it? Funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> uh, um, how do I? What do you mean? How do I observe it? Like I I would think that. Like me just kind of going print something only tells us that the open command was successful. At least we However, know it didn't fail. It doesn't tell me. Yeah, it didn't fail. So it doesn't tell me that the print f print f or whatever command was successful. How do we know if f print f was successful? Are we going to make nested if loops? It sounds like a very bad time. Uh, we we could, but I mean, did w w how do you think f print f tells you how it went? I mean, same. I guess it print or it returns null. If it it, it returns successful. something, but you better look in the man page because <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to guess this one. Trust me. <laughs> oh boy. We guess it's some random integer. Oh. Close. Is... <laughs> it's. See it's not random, but it's definitely a it's definitely an integer. You got that right. Okay. The family produce output according to a format as described below. It uh, returns an integer. Yeah, return value is always in its own section. These man pages are designed for quick reading. Return value. Upon successful return, these functions return the number of characters printed, excluding the null byte. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm guessing if an output error, a negative value is returned. Of course, why not? No, anything else returns null. <laughs> told you there was no way you were going to guess this it one. <laughs> <laughs> Standardization is your friend. Um, <laughs> I love the old C stuff. If I yep. return a random value that's not zero, we win. Yep. So this was useful when you were kind of wondering how many bytes actually got written because of partial writes. You know, maybe you punched part of a card. 
<laughs> and then something bad happened, right? This is kind of, I told this is kind of the era where these functions are created. So um, they, they, they do tell you, the only time you're really going to care how many bytes get written is when you're dealing with a network, you know, where it's okay. very unreliable mean. But in, most of the time nowadays, like, you'll just kind of test whether or not it was negative is kind of a more common thing. So why don't you go and test printf for us? I mean, the way that we... So, well, let's see, hold on. Okay, so fprintf returns what? What's the data type? It returns an integer. All right, so, so let's let's start there. Yeah, stuff is good. <laughs> Naming is hard. <laughs> Okay. Here's your nested if. Oh, are we just? Oh, that's no, okay. You can print it out. That's cool. Yeah, let's that's observe. Lazy. All right. Um. Nice, nice. Huh. Okay. Work. And where did that eleven come from? It is the number of characters that it has f print f'd. Okay, and how would we calculate that to know if it printed the right number? Um, so I would have to set it worked to Let's, mm. let's, yeah, that's fine. a good it's move. Fine. You know what? We should, we should, that's we a good should. refactor, by the way. <laughs> Stir thing. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just got rid of the. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep the new line. Ah, it's a string. What did last miles tell you? Never print the string in the format specifier. Never print the string in the format specifier? What? Yeah, this is the format specifier. So. Oh, that, right. Yeah, okay. never just print the naked string. That That is dangerous. Eh, 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 eh. You don't know the size of that thing. Don't use that size of. But mom. <laughs> <laughs> Not size of. Get away from the size of. What's at the end of a C string? A null byte. Yes. And what's our function that looks for. Oh, that. Okay, but hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold your horses. Um, horses are held. Um, totally need a horse here. Make a note. You should just have like a I bunch of random sounds on model. <laughs> yep. I am pulling this out of okay. Um, yeah, just reason through it. Yeah, we want the length of stir thing. We'll throw it into annoying. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, ah. now have your program test it. Right now you're printing uh, it out and then we as humans have to go look at this output and decide if it worked. How do we get the program to do that? So, is there is there is there like an assert? In there is. C? Don't use assert. Assert is a, um, that's kind of more for like programming errors. Yeah. By the way, I don't know where you learned this style, but. <laughs> yeah. With a new line, right? 
Do you always have to have an else? You always have to close the braces you open. <laughs> I know, Python, you're not used to braces. It's okay, it happens. All right. All right, you can put an else in there because you wouldn't really know if it failed. <laughs> Strophium, but I dabbed. <laughs> Okay, I like it. It's descriptive, very, very technical, <laughs> you can see how very I'm syntactic. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's cool. What I'm angry. I like it. Yeah, they, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Very specific. I like it. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to add any semantics. I'm not going to say what went wrong in general. I'm going to say exactly this line failed. I like it. Hey, all ah. right. It's like how an alien describes. No, it's it's part. totally fine. <laughs> Okay, I think you should grab that program because I'm about to erase a big chunk of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, also should probably specify for chat, this is not how I write code for work. No, I, no. I know how to write. This is like, this We're is- We're learning C, it's okay. Yeah, have fun with it, right? Yeah. Live coding too, we get to, oh, you already copied, right? I copied. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff um, because okay. There were problems, that's all fine. Now we have a file. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we read from it? Uh, like you want me to change this or you want to keep the, like the, so, never mind. Like that. Uh, that's correct, that flipped the file specifiers. Now we're opening this thing to be readable. Mm -hmm. Now we have to read from it. If we're committing find all occurrences, it's true. <laughs> yeah. it no, we're, we're so deleting the things. <laughs> let's, let's take away oh, that temptation. My god. The variables that exist in some of my code. Yes. Um, I mean, we could run it in our current state, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we want to go ahead. Okay. Doesn't produce so, any output. <laughs> There's um, that produce word again. <laughs> so if we want to write, read it, I'm guessing that's the f git s. Yeah. That was very hesitant. Yeah. No. That's totally. That's that's it. So are we going to try to guess what the parameters are like in f get s? Um, sure, why not? So, <laughs> I'm guessing that, well. <laughs> Bad things about to happen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, well, given the name of it, its purpose is to get a string. From so, from an F, right? It's an F yes. get S. Yeah, so, so my intuition would be that we might need to. <laughs> There's intuitions with the C standard <laughs> library? This is new. <laughs> You're learning that newfangled C I never heard of, aren't you? Um, and then, so. I gotta join chat on this one. <laughs> All right, here we go, friends. Can I guess it? I don't know. Now, all right, let's think about this. So the way that you described this earlier is that this is not going to be random access. This is going to be seeking. And I need to be able to tell it. Well, you said now, nowadays, modern operating systems can handle it and it'll know when to stop. But I feel like you're probably still going to make me do it the old sad way. Um, let's try half guess. So it needs the file, but I feel like it needs to know how far to go as well. Like it needs to know how much. Where would we find this out? Uh, First of all, that line you just wrote in line 11, string yes. thing. Mm -hmm. How big is that string thing? 
It's as big as it wants to be. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's, C um, is very specific about memory usage in the stack frame. You're only allowed to use this syntax when you assign it to something. Oh, okay. Well, there. Okay. I know it's not going to be bigger than that. Right. So now that we're treating this thing as a place to store stuff, we're going to call it a buff just because it's a buffer. Okay, buff thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, be C style about it at least, you know. <laughs> the opportunity was there. I had to be sass. Okay, well, um, go sass. Let's. All right. So now we know that we have enough storage, but what are we not gonna know about our file? Um. I mean, a lot of things, know. I guess. But yeah. I mean, as pertains to fgets, like as for getting a string, what do we not know? Assuming I didn't just write the file, we don't know how long it's going to be. Yeah, we have we no idea how, how long that string is going to be. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of where things start to get a little tricky. But um, so again, that's something that Python just sort of automatically like allocates enough memory for you, and everything just kind of works out. But C, like no, no, no. Coding Butler. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen in C. So, <laughs> all right, I think this is a good time to look at the man page. Let's not try to guess all of it. Actually, why am I pulling it up on the web? You can pull it up on the website. I actually have the manual here. Oh, oh no, I don't have it on the window. Chat. So chat can see. Yeah. Now I was going to show the terminal, but then I realized I'm not showing the terminal. Mm -hmm. OK, so f get s. It's all kind of lumped together in this page. Um, okay. How many parameters does it take? Three. And where's the file parameter? At the end. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? That makes sense. All the other f functions usually have it up front. But you know what? Like, it's seriously. OK. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Extropium has some wisdom here. C stands for consistent. <laughs> so, so don't guess, because there is no intuition about this. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> Look up the functions. So... Size obviously being how many characters, like the the size of the string. It's and then not the, the size of the string, it's the size of S. Like we don't know how many bytes there are gonna be on the read. So this is basically telling F get S, this is how much is safe to buffer. Like I've got this much buffer space available. So don't give me more than that. Okay. So why does it take both a care and a size then? Wouldn't it just because, need a size? Well, where's it gonna write the result? I see, okay, yep. And All then right. it needs to know how much result to write and it needs to know where it can write it. Uh, how does int, okay. Is this one of those format specifier things where I can't put the form, I have to put like percentage D or something? No, 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 that's. Okay. I've left you in Python for too long. <laughs> oh, oops, there's a little comma. Okay. Yep. All right, what are you cranky about? No, you shouldn't declare it identifier. Put it only once. Which undeclared identifier? Yeah, what's the undeclared identifier? Oh, oops. That was my bad. Okay. Um <laughs> Also a thousand, huh? Well. Um So I'm going to tell you right now, this doesn't work kind of like your intuition. So, um Okay. In this it, it's not going to copy. It, it, it really means that it wants a pointer. Um, we're going to do more with pointers a little bit later, but it works like that. Because the okay. storage is not really going to be there. The storage for it is really going to be buffer thing. Mm -hmm. That's why you're passing that in as a 
kind of a pointer so that I can do that. But um, what is the return value really used for? So how, how is return value different from kind of buff thing? Like I mean, string so thing the return value thing. is more about whether or not it was successful. Yes, the that's return, exactly like, it. Yeah, versus actually the data. That yeah, it's not actually the storage for it, right? That you're going to have to pass in so that it has a place to write it to. Yes. So this is really like, you can think of this more as like the return value. And I'll just propagate that change for you. So this is, it's not really something that you want to directly use unless you're comparing it, unless you're looking specifically for an error. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks for the subscription, Loafbone. I appreciate it. Um. You are contributing to the fund of whiskey that I buy for this show. <laughs> I still don't get the pointer there. I'm sorry. Okay, you mean which which pointer? The one that's on line twelve? Yes. Okay, man page. What is the return value? When what? Why wouldn't I make the so? First of all, I forgot that's the return value. It's going to be an int. We know that. Wait, is it? Yeah, that's what it said, didn't it? Uh, it take returns? a look at F get S. Oh, I was looking at F get C. Yeah. Um, F get S. Okay, it does return it. Yep. And it tells you right there in the return value why. Returns S on success and null on error. Yeah. Or when end of file. And that's error. kind of the reason why. That's the answer to your question. Like, why does it have to be a pointer? Because it doesn't want to change the data you're passing. And it doesn't want to throw away the pointer you've got. So basically, in line 11, you're declaring a buff thing, which is 1,000 bytes big. Mm -hmm. And actually, I should say it's a thousand, whatever the size care is, but care is a byte. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, if if we go and we change that to something else, we lose kind of our reference to buff thing. Like if I take buff thing and I say buff thing is now zero, like buff thing is null, mm -hmm. then... Yeah, I've lost where that is in memory, right? Buff thing yeah. is really like kind of like the base of this thousand bytes. But if I if I move buff thing, then I don't know where buff thing starts anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So they can't do that to you, <laughs> right? In fgets, you would have to like always save whatever you're about to pass in to see if they change it or not. So that's kind of crazy. So instead, they say we're going to return something that tells you if there's an error or not. How does it know if it's an error? It'll return what? S. Or sorry, uh, null. Yeah, it returns null if there's an error. And then they say, if it's not an error, so if it's not null, then what's it going to return? Well, it could return a 1. It could return a 15. It could return whatever the hell it felt like returning. In this case, they decided to make it line up with the positive case of where S is. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not really like, that doesn't matter so much. It's really about the fact that like, it's the negative case that causes them to do this. Like if they if they return if they tried to set buff thing to null on you, you'd be in trouble. They need a way to return the error. So if it's successful. Yep. Then ret val is going to match buff thing. They're both going to point exactly. to the same part okay. of memory. All right. But but mm -hmm. why does ret val have to be a pointer? And buff thing is not. Because like, F get S doesn't know how big ret val is. Right. Ret val would be defined on so but going back to our stack frame view of the world, mm -hmm. like in the stack frame where you're calling this thing, ret val has a size. In the case of a pointer, it's just whatever the size of a memory address is. But in the case of buff thing, it's pointed to memory which has a thousand bytes. Right? Right, the difference right. between buff thing and retval. Retval is just pointing to some piece of memory, but it doesn't allocate any memory kind of on its own other than enough room. But if to... we know that if it's successful, mm -hmm. it will need to be the same size, why would we not just set it to be that size? 
well, th now you're throwing away 2,000 bytes for no reason. I mean, why would you allocate twice when all you're trying to do is return whether or not why it worked? Why isn't everything pointers? A lot of the stuff in the standard library is pointers. That's exactly the case. Oh, all right. I mean, I just... I mean, if you want to write your own version of fgets that, you know, takes that, because now you're going to also have to pass along the size of that thing. And then, I mean, are you going to write, like, how are you going to pass the error back now? I mean, you could have just made it, like, return int, in which case, you know, it would be, like, you know, now you'd have a little more space. Say, like, all right, if it's a five, it's this kind of error. If it's a seven, it's that kind of error, you know. You, you could do that kind of convention. But mm -hmm. they didn't. They chose to return you know, something which kind of maps to the thing or or it maps to null, but they don't want to allocate any more memory, really, just whatever it takes for a pointer. So that that's that's kind of the reasoning. Otherwise, you'd have to double whatever your buffer size is. All right, well, enough talk. Let's see it. Okay, now I set it to null, so we set ourselves oh. up. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yay! It worked. Okay, so it just read that out of a file, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You persisted that. That's data at rest. If I run your <laughs> program again, there's no it worked in here, but I execute it magic, right? Mm -hmm. Except I got an extra new line. Why? Because when we wrote it in, there was a new uh -huh. line, and then also when I printed it, there's a new line. You got it. And that's gonna catch you a lot, trust me. <laughs> it catches me all the time. <laughs> okay, um, great. So now we know how to write to a file, we know how to read from a file. Mm -hmm. What if we wanted to write a number to a file? How would we do that? Um, F put I? There's no F put I. I okay. oh, <laughs> F put no, you already know a perfectly good way to write to a file. What, do, what what would you use normally to print a number? Print f. Yeah. What's our file equivalent? Okay. Yeah. F print f. Yep. We know how to write numbers. <laughs> yeah. Go <laughs> Let ahead. Me save this real quick before I mess too much with it. We need um, that checkpoint function. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to put that down as a soft topic. Why not pass another buffer? Let's see what else we get. Um, okay. okay, so we're back to writing. Mm that we made a pointer last time, but I need that again. Um, how did I do it before? I didn't need a pointer before. Yeah, I don't, if, if printf doesn't take a pointer. Doesn't return a pointer, I should say. Uh, gone to the new lines, huh? So that's kind of important on file IO because fgets is typically scans until it hits a new line, assuming it's smaller than whatever your buffer size is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Final Jeopardy music, Nathaniel. Wants. I actually I have some I have some appropriate mu music. I'll go queue up. Oh, I think you're gonna solve this one in time. That we're I'm not going to get the music in there, but. It's 
That's right. Coffee with the crew always tells me it's like, yeah, it's a good spot for you to play the music. I wrote. <laughs> I'll give you a sad song. How's this, Nathaniel? I can't hear it, so. Oh. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um. Really to make you upset. Yeah, size of already makes me upset. Oh, come on. What, what is the point of that existing if I'm not supposed to use it? It's just for types. It's really just for types. Oh, oopsies. Um, well, let me think about this. Why don't you print it out first so that we see it? Let's develop an intuition on it. Print what out? Uh, Retval. Yeah, before we test it, let's see what it would be. Uh, this is going to be... Oh, what type is Retval? Yep. I'm going to label this for you. Okay. Why do you think it was two? Because that's not the size of an integer. No. So last time it was about the length of the string, right? And so it's going to be the integer and a null byte. What is the number that gets printed out? Um. What do you mean? What is the number that gets printed out? What are you actually uh, writing into that file? Hopefully five. Okay. Five binary five, like the value five, or five the ASCII interpretation of five? Five the value five, which is why I specified to it that it's expecting a number. And okay. So when you did F print F, it turned it into ASCII values, right? That's the, the percent D specifier turned it into a printable character. So okay. if I do like 50 and I run your routine again, mm -hmm. then it returns three this time. Why? So in an ASCII sense, how many letters does it take to print out the number 50? How many symbols? Print out. I'm not sure I'm following you. This 50. Mm -hmm. I print it out, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many letters is that made up of? How many character positions is that made up? Two plus an all byte, so three. New line in this case, but yes. Or new line, yeah, like the, the ending portion. Yes, portions. yes. Yeah. That's, that's the three. Okay, yeah. So it's returning the length stuff. It's that's not the size of an integer, right? So in this case... I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. the, the integer itself on our platform is going to be 32 bits, so four bytes. That makes sense. All or right. actually, it'll be 64 on We don't really platform. have like a... We would have to kind of use string length but convert it to a string yeah and because we'll do we're... the sim to do the test that we did before basically yeah it's a little trickier yeah because we'd have to like print it into a string and then see how long that is and then make sure that those two match well that's handy because there's another version of printf i want to show you what do you think this does Um, I'm going to um, stop the music here. So well, F print F was about printing to a file. Yes. And F get S, S was about reading what from a file? A string. Yep. So S so print F. Is printing to a string? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it's going to do. So if I want to know how many 
letters it takes up to print out this number. I could just print it to a string and then calculate that, right? Yeah. I mean, so like, it doesn't matter if it's like 50,000 or 50 or whatever. Like, if I print that into a string, it'll null terminate it. And then I can count the number of characters until the null byte, or I could use strlen to do that. Yes. Okay, so go ahead, do that. How do I tell how long number is? Um, how do, I, I don't know how this one works. Oh, sprintf is almost identical to fprintf. The difference is that the first parameter is the string you want to print it to. So I'm guessing, though, that I have to now create another integer that is the return value for sprintf, right? Don't worry about the return value for the moment, because we don't check okay. the return value on printf anyway. So we're going to let's assume it worked for the moment. OK. Um, and you said, I'm sorry, the first one is the what string you want. you want to print it to. So before in fprintf, it's the file you want to print it to. But in sprintf, it's the string you want to print it to. So I'm going to give you a string. Which will be big enough. <laughs> OK. What's the next thing to printf? The, what you want it to print? No, no, the specifier. The specifier? OK. Yep. OK. There's the number. Cool. Let's assume that that worked. So we'll assume that sprintf returned properly. So mm -hmm. now the, the text of the number is stored in another buff, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um... So how long is another buff? Uh, uh, well, I'm I'm trying to find that out, hmm. right? So that's okay. Let's let's not confuse ourselves because now we got multiple buffers. Oh, I think I I'm gonna let's reload real fast. Refresh. Yeah, refresh. Okay. I think we got ourselves into trouble there, so let me just clean that up. You were writing this, right? Yes. Um, I mean, we don't have a buff right now. Yeah, but we're, we might bring it back in a moment when we start working with the file. sense we changed it i'm sorry i was sitting here going how did we get from three to six but i forgot that you changed it to fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. so that makes sense yeah i mean that looks six ish plus it has a new line <laughs> right five ish and a new line yep. okay so you feel pretty good printf f printf a little sneak in there of s printf yeah um f get s all I right now it's time for the final. Oh, Lord. OK. So <laughs> you want to copy this, or should I? Just... Oh, yeah, let me copy it. You're good. OK. So great. And uh, just to Nathaniel's comment, uh, we're not ready to get into like, I, I'm trying to develop an intuition about the standard IO library for right now. So I don't want to spend too much time getting into the memory, but there, there's, there's some dangerous memory stuff that we're sort of hand waving at. That's, okay. I think, l l let's build up our intuition with the basics first, um, and then we'll get, I'll, I'll get a little more critical about your notion of stack frame and all that other stuff. Okay, so I've just reduced this to opening and closing. Um, and <laughs> wait, strophium asks, 
the scene from Doctor Strange. If I told you more than you already know, you'd run this place in terror. Yeah, I tried to warn her Strophium up front about C, but anyway, <laughs> so we'll get to that. Um, okay, so we have this file and it's opening. We put it into the file handle and we check to see if that worked and then we can go back and we can F close it. So right now we're kind of in our like identity type. We open and we close. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go back to reading, except now we're gonna go read a file that I already prepared for you. So what is this file? We could, we could have you start writing things out or we could let you discover this for yourself. So great, read a line from this file and print it out. Try not to destroy the file, but I have a copy of it here just in case. So watch your I file no modes. <laughs> Gonna make a note from Nathaniel about pitfalls of S printf. You're absolutely right though, by the way, Nathaniel. I mean it is definitely a very dangerous tool. I probably shouldn't have showed you sprintf yet. <laughs> there were problems. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I named the. F That's not what I named the file. But look, your error code detected that. Isn't that great? All right. Yes. It's called okay. asn.tsv. My bad. Okay. No worries. Okay. There's level three. Okay, this is some data. We're gonna play with data. You're a data scientist, so mm -hmm. here's a little public data. This is um, a data pack I pulled from Friday's session uh, about teleporting anywhere in the world because that's fun. Okay. <laughs> we, we like doing that. Um, and so these are ASNs. This is kind of part of how the internet works. So if you pulled in two lines and printed them out, how would you just quickly start looping through this? I'm going to tell you that there's like tons of lines in this file. So let's print out like, you know, the first three of them. Hmm. Now we could just keep copying your fgets and your print, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking back to what you said at the very start about how when you start you start reading it it's going to kind of be iterative and so mm -hmm. i think that we need to leave the file open so mm -hmm. that iterative process is kind of triggered uh -huh. we're not like opening closing opening closing and like yep. the same we want to keep the state of where we are in the file but then so all right so i think let me think this through, hold on. Well, actually, let me start with a simpler question. Right now you're reading one line from the file and you're printing it out, right? Mm -hmm. How would we read the next line from the file? I mean, you would just do it again. Okay, so let's do that. But 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 I, I, I can do don't. the loop. Yeah, I was I just, just thinking, I just well, wanted to we think don't, for We a don't second. need to think. Let's, let, let's actually see how the file position moves. Okay, so then I mean, you would just, I don't mind if you copy pasta. It's okay. I mean, we have to change all of this. Right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't redeclare the variables. Yeah. I mean, but doesn't. Uh, don't we, we, we do get we to can't think. Overwrite. We can't overwrite. Why not? Memories write once. So we're assuming it's the same size. Well, we don't know what the size is anyway. We're specifying how big buff is, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing we've specified is how big buff is. It's a thousand bytes. So, and then you're saying read a thousand bytes from your file and then read mm -hmm. 
the next thousand bytes from the file. Right. Okay, let's, and look, it works. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we, we're okay overwriting it, right? Because that's just yeah. memory that we're going to kind of keep reusing. And it's going to move that null byte as as it sort of pertains. So if I printed out the length of the first line and I printed out the length of the second line, they'd be different, right? Now, by the way, I'm just going to warn you about this data. It's tab separated. So these aren't spaces in between like the two and the 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 year. They're tabs. They're tabs. Um, okay. You can't really easily see that on the output. I should make a note. <laughs> but um, okay, so I mean, well, TSV kind of told me that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so great. Now let's tuck that into a loop. We're okay overwriting it. Mm -hmm. So let's print out the first five. Jeopardy music. Hey, what's up, Nightshade, dude? Sorry, I didn't see you there earlier. And this is the wild. Oh, that's too exciting. That's also too exciting. Okay, this is, this is the right, right level of excitement. By the way, Nightshade Dude, it didn't happen in the afternoon. I have a feeling it's not going to happen tonight, but we're going to stay just at 199 followers. <laughs> just can't tick over. Okay, nice. All right, so if we wanted to change this to the first 100, piece of cake now, right? Yep. Is that what you, you want me to do? It? Well, that's all right, I'll do it. All right, so this is cool. Um, what is the data that's in here? This, these are ASNs, so I know to a data scientist this probably doesn't matter. It's like it's just data. <laughs> but, um, this this will tell you. I'm going to tell you the record format right now. It's three fields. So the first one is the autonomous system number. That's just like an identifier that's registered to the company that's specified in field two, which is this level three parent LLC in the first one. And the third field is an ISO 3166 two letter country code. Okay. Yep. I've actually used those country codes um, in a separate data project. So nice. Yep. I try to use them whenever I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So great. These will tell us things like ASNs. Now, what we're gonna go actually, you know, do something with this data. So why don't we? Because you know, this isn't Python, and we don't get things like to just easily chop them up. How do we start chopping up? one of these lines. So let's go back to your case of a single read. All right, so if I clear the output and I execute, mm -hmm. I just have a single line. Now, I told yep. you before it's tab separated. So yep. the tab character, do you remember the escape sequence forward in C? No. All right, it's backslash T. So okay. um, no biggie. So we go and we get the thing. In line 15, you're storing it in buff thing. Okay, you have a pointer that refers to it in RetVal. Um, so that data is in buff thing. So if I start, if I wanted to write a function that assumes that this format is consistent, mm -hmm. how could I get it to chop those three parts up? So I want to do a little parsing. Well, so essentially we're going to be What you would want to do is you would want to kind of take a similar approach to how we wrote the string length function previously, mm -hmm. but instead of trying to measure, you know, number of characters and wait for a null byte, in this case, you're going to be splitting on uh, the the tab. Instead. Great. Well, except you're going to be splitting on the tab. So go ahead. Let's do a function. Okay. Let's pass. Um, let's get this out of main. So let's define a new function. Your intuition so, sounds great, by the way. 
forgot to say. Right, so let me think this through. <sighs> um, I want to think about this for a second. So, I was gonna say don't overthink it's too hard and see it's probably easier to just kind of get like what yeah start with like the function signature file chopper nice except let's <laughs> let, let's call it line chopper because we're gonna okay. we're gonna feed it a line at a time so let's think about this it needs to be given um mm -hmm. a string did, mm, should it be a pointer? I feel like maybe yeah. it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, well, let's not call it a string. We, we we have a better word for it now. Line. Yeah, it's a line. Um, Doesn't need anything then, else. No, I don't think it does. Nope. Just needs a line. All right. I like to start with just the signature like that because that's enough thinking for that part. We want a function that takes a line and chops it. That's a great name. It's a line chopper. This, by the way, the technical term is a scanner, but it choppers, I like chopper. <laughs> Choppa, we could do it with an Arnold accent. <laughs> so line chopper just takes a line and it chops it up. Now in our case, we're not gonna return it. So let's return nothing. We just wanna put the parts out piece by piece. So mm -hmm. we could store them if you want, that's kind of up to you, but um, okay. So how do we get this? All right, so we know that we have line. We know that it's gonna be pointed at the start of our line. So now thinking it out, what do we kind of want to accomplish, right? We want to go do something to line, right? We want to do, some, wait, what, sorry? We want to do something to the line variable, right? So yes, yes. What do we what do we want to accomplish? Like, what do we want our function to do? So we want it to start reading in the characters of the mm -hmm. string that is the line. Well, they're already read off the file. They're in line, right? Okay, but you're well, okay. You're reading the characters of line. Gotcha. Yes, and then how many characters are there? When you hit the tab. Okay. And I mean, we're not going to know how many characters it is. That's the problem. Yep. Yep. We'd have to pass that along, sort of like how fgets did it. But let's mm -hmm. let's not do that. So let's just assume that it's valid and it ends. What, what What's at the end of our line? A new line. Okay. There's a new line. And then at the end of every string, right after the new uh, line? The null byte. Okay. So let's, let's use the new line like you said. Let's assume that all the file is properly new line terminated, which <laughs> that's a big one right there. But... <laughs> Um, that's a doozy, I'll tell you right now. So let's assume that it's new line terminated. Mm -hmm. So, and it's properly formatted. So how many tabs do you have in the line? Two. Good. So what do we need to do? Let's start with the first one. So everything up to the first tab is what? Um, the ASN. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna have. Hey, what's up, Sunny? How you doing? And for simplicity, let's just assume that all of your buffers are a thousand bytes. So let's call them all a thousand. I don't want to get into dynamics stuff yet. And then there's like the company or whatever. Yep. It's name. It's friendly name is the official thing, but name is good. And then there's the country. Now this one we do know the length. But, oh yeah, so it's just going to be two. But right? uh, go a thousand because I don't I don't want you to get into overflows yet. <laughs> okay. All right. So our goal of line chopper is to get into these three things, and then we're going to print them out. Let's print them out in reverse order to know that we properly parse this thing. So we'll print the country code first, the name middle, and then the ASN last. Okay. So transposing them will tell us that we parsed it right. 
So yeah, me too. <laughs> Mondays. Um, yeah, parsing. <laughs> So just I think, think we're just going to go scotch after this. <laughs> Maybe I should open mine now. No, no, I don't want you to rush. <laughs> You're getting the hang of these three part four loops, huh? Well, except. Um, okay, so let me think about this. When we did this before, we made kind of the the no, I think the terminal condition can be the same. I'm, I'm, no, nope, I'm fine. I'm talking to myself. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. So we need this to be. Wait, do we want to go until the new line, or what did you just say before? So. I, I have a, I have a. Hey, yeah, talk it out. Talk it out. So I was thinking about go if you go until the tab the entire loop is going to stop when it hits that's the tab. okay why don't we just break it into separate loops so we'll do one loop for each of these but that's that's i guess what i'm i'm getting hung up on is hmm. that i i could see you like returning the i or something where the tab character was and then starting the next loop where that one left off but i feel like the issue Okay. The issue here, I, I feel like... That sounds good. So, I feel like there's got to be a more efficient way to do it this oh, way. Oh, don't worry about efficient. We're not worried about efficient. Where you... We can still just pass through this in one scan doing it your way. So from an efficiency perspective, not concerned at all. I guess it just seems like... It seems really messy to have just all of these... Loops. It's C. One after the other. Be messy. Okay. Okay. Let me um, let me help you with one thing though. We do to your point. We don't return i from the loop. All we do is we just define i to be not in that scope, right? So yeah. we don't need to actually define it there. Um. And so now, Sunny, don't don't be naughty. Sunny's got her issues with uh, some Python yeah, dev she worked with. <laughs> I'm trying to put Python on GPUs and you care pretty fast what's efficient. All right. Um, all right. Let's think. So we want to... Actually, I don't know if we've ever talked about this. No, 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 we have. How, you can, can you do like um, slicing, string slicing? You can, but let's... Why do you want to? Because, okay, so so here's what I'm thinking, is that we ideally want, at some point, we're going to have to store, mm -hmm. like, ASN, name, and country. Why don't we and store so, as we go along? Yeah, that's fine. And okay. that, we can totally do that. But we still have to be able to say everything up till this point from the start until this point gets stored. Do you I see what I'm saying? Don't follow that. Everything up until this point is stored. So here, let me let me. Uh, so for here, for example, we would go. It's going to iterate. We don't really need it to do unless I guess. Uh, trying to think this through. Well, line Actually, I gives Actually, us the current on. character, right? That would. It would work for this loop, but it wouldn't work for the first one. To s can you store in ASN? Can you like index and go like ASN zero equals this, ASN one yeah, equals this? So totally. In this case, but I, it's not going to work for the rest of them. Yeah, um, but that's okay. One at a time. <laughs> that's why I gave you a parsing problem. <laughs> this. Oops, it's N. So we start at zero, it's going to store each one in there until it hits the tab and stop. And then we have our new value of I. Okay. And so I think- I'll next, be left off at the right place, which is kind of your earlier algorithm. Yes, and so then- Let's, let's not jump too far at once. Let, okay. Let's look at what we did. Let's, let's print out what we've done so far. 
Now you're manually constructing this string, keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And there's a catch with what you're writing. What goes at the end of every string? The null character? Yeah. Are you copying a null character? I mean, the terminal character for line sub i is going to be a tab, which so you're not copying. So if it's treating copying. the entire line as, if it's treating the whole line as a single string, uh -huh. then no, we won't be right. copying a null character. So that's your job. Right. I have to add one? Yeah, exactly. ASN is not going to be null terminated. Not, 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 not every time. <laughs> oh, at the very end. Of yeah, <laughs> you only have to add one null byte. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, oh, it's just zero. Yeah, it's backslash zero. It's back, backslash zero. There yeah. Go. Now, okay. the only thing that I want to kind of poke at is why is it plus one? Because I should have left itself. How do you feel about that? Right, because we increase at the start of the loop. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. So let's try this out. Now, did we call our function? I don't remember. No, we have not. Okay, so let's try calling it. Okay. Um, and then, so I can feed it buff thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oopsies. We're not really testing retval here, but. Okay. So that'll call it. Mm -hmm. and... and the print is part of it, so. Okay, let's see it. Sounds pretty That's good. What it was supposed to be, so. What if we fed it five lines? Um. Okay. Okay, also good. Yeah, also still looking good. So turns out this is not what we wanted with this plus one here. What do you mean? So you're null terminating i already advanced by one yeah and that's what i missed is that i forgot that the i advances at the start right. and then it does the check right and so that's kind of where that matters kind of with that yeah okay mm -hmm. good all right so that's good let's grab the next part okay and i'm just gonna get rid of your extra line here so that we can fit stuff on the screen <laughs> so then um I feel like Oh, we could just use i, right? We don't we don't need to. So so this is for the indexing later. Or no, wait, we found a mm, why why do I want that? I have a feeling like I want that. You do. Maybe I don't need No, your yes, intuition's on to something. I do. Yeah. Um, okay. How about we create J? Okay, but what are we going to use J for? Uh, hold on. So. J is going to index the next character. The next character. The next, um, so it's going to index name for us. Oh, yes. It's going to be our so name otherwise index. Otherwise, we're going to have like, yes. all this weird stuff in this space, and I don't want to do that. Um. I mean, so in that case, I could have just, no. So for I... Do I have to say? No, I don't. I can just say that for I. Mm. 
No, I... We need I to be plus one here. We do. Because, no. Because... Mm. Wait, you got to finish the sentence. <laughs> I'm thinking. So, <laughs> I, in the previous loop, uh -huh. increased by one. And then it stopped because the line indexed at that I was a tab. Uh-huh. And we want so to keep the same logic, right? Right. So let's but, keep the same logic. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that here, uh -huh. we need we cannot start with the I value that we were left over with at the end. Why? Because it's a t because if you index line at that I, it's going to be a tab. So it won't run anything. So we have to start Or did one, it add one, one on the last forward. part of the loop? So no, 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 but that's that's what I'm saying. Is it it doesn't add one at the end, it adds ones at the at the start of the loop. And so I'm not 100% sure about that. Well, that's why. Why, we why don't we start in... with the naive version? Well, Let's... hold on. Let me. I, I want to reason through this. So, okay. the the reason that why we were able to in this in line thirteen uh -huh. index ASN by I mm -hmm. and put something there is because that's where the tab was. Okay. And we're replacing it okay. with a null byte. Okay. Meaning that I is the current index of the tab. Okay. In our, in our line, and so, so if we start with i being that tab then we'll see a tab at the start of this output right exactly okay let's see if we see that tab so let's test your theory or wait no or <laughs> i like i like your explanation let's see if it if it matches okay we don't have to guess Can I just do the plus plus again? Or sure. Okay, does that have a time? Like that? Yeah, that plus plus is just equal. J is equal to J plus one. It's just shorthand. Okay. All right. Um. In assembly, it's actually an op code, but this. Doesn't matter. There's optimizing compilers these days. Nathaniel's mentioning one of the most heavy weight of them, <laughs> Clang or Clang, which is from the LLVM package. Okay. So. I am going to change this to one again. And, hmm. Okay, so we don't, I, I wanna start labeling these lines because we don't really know what's happening in the output right now. So I'm just gonna preface them just so that okay. we know that there's at least something there that's supposed to be there. Okay, that makes sense. so we execute and we're getting nothing for name. I think that's because it's starting with the tab. I, I like your theory. Now, the reason why I like to do this this way first is because we mm -hmm. start with a failing case and then we make it pass. Okay, so that makes sense. So I believed your theory. In fact, I, I was pretty sure you were right. But the thing is, the other way we won't know. You know, like like it's 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 harder to like have a positive case that works and then wonder if it really failed and we just didn't see it, okay. <laughs> as opposed that to seeing the failure and then knowing that that's wrong and now we're going to make it pass, which is kind of the more the test driven development way to go. So okay. there is a reason, there is a method to the madness. So yeah, let's set I to start. What, what do we want to do to I? I mean, your theory I mean, looks good. It's just we don't want it to iterate, but I think we can just do that. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, kick okay. it one at the start. It's not going to do it every time there, but yeah. hey, look at that. Okay. You got two fields. Sweet. You got All one right. left. Yep. Okay, so now. 
I'm gonna look at Nathaniel's comment while you're writing that. Clang format just uses the clang front end to make sure it doesn't. Matter. I guess you could use indent or GNU. I think, yeah. Uh, Nathaniel, it, it's I just really haven't gotten to it. There's more that I want to tell you about this editor, um, but I, I kind of like where you're going. Oops, she's typing off screen on my screen. <laughs> Wait, why are we using a new variable? I guess J doesn't, no, J changes because that's what we were indexing with. So we need a new indexer that's also zero. Why do we need a new indexer? Because J changed. I can reset it to zero. Yeah. I just figured I it mean, would be do we need to make them separate. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need, reusing J would be okay, right? Because we're using J really as an indexer into the destination and we're using K as an index, or well, sorry, an I as an indexer into the source. But K would have worked fine. I mean, it's just burning another memory location. We're in C, so we're sensitive now about memory. <laughs> Nathaniel, I'm adding this as a discussion topic. All right. So how do we know that there's no tabs that we accidentally picked up at the ends of these strings? Tabs that we accidentally picked up. A tab well, is non-printable. So if there was a tab at the end of US, it would not show up. We wouldn't know if it was there or not, right? Well, because every time that we were assigning characters, it was within a loop whose like sort of terminal condition was Ah, so the faith for principle. It to be. Well, no, it's it's logic that. Uh, if, that this is how programmers get trapped in C all the time. How would you well, verify? How would you verify? <laughs> C is very logical. It just the logic isn't always the logic you think it is. I mean, apart from setting even more loops and iterating back through each of the variables. How about a much simpler way? I'm not sure how. Why how don't you we would just answers. mark the start and the end of these strings? What do you mean? You see what I'm, I'm not sure what like yeah, look at line 14. Well, I'm just marking these are just plain characters that are going to print out, but they're going to show up at the start and the end of the string. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, yeah, I can very quickly and easily see if there's an invisible character there or not. Cuz like if there's a spacing thing, it's going to push my marker out, right? Yes. This is the sense. cheap way of not doing what you said. Like you, what you're saying is like kind of the right way to verify, you know, but it's like, it's like, why write another program to verify this when we could just mark our things. Okay. So if we go and we look at the output, oh, look at that. There was an invisible character. Oh, okay. So I think, hmm, what happened there? By the way, this is a very cheap technique. You'll see me use this all the time, but it's just because doing what you said is is correct, but it's hard, right? You know, it's like you now have to write another loop, and you have to, you know, is that one right? And you know, you get into the scope problem. Like, how do you build a multimeter when you don't have a good multimeter to check in? And <laughs> so, let me think. Mm hmm. Huh. Where 
where's that extra one coming from? Because I, I would think that it's not, it can't be added. In I the even loop. warned you earlier that I because... do this all the time. This, this is why we do not try to go the logic route. We just find a way to naively verify what the computer's doing. All right, so let's look at the output. What is it doing? What do you mean, what is it doing? I mean, what are we actually seeing? We're seeing that the first two variables are fine, but mm -hmm. there's a tab at the end of the third. Is there a tab? Or a new line. Or is there a new line? And so, hold on, because if we reached, let me think this through. For the last one, for uh -huh. the last loop, yep. it, it's not going to end in a tab. It it's doesn't end in a tab, line. yeah. And so we need to change that. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So it's not about logic. Logic, yeah, the computer's logical, but it's a little too logical. <laughs> okay, so we are terminating right, right? Yeah, so it is ending when it's supposed to. It's ending where it's supposed to now, before we were kind of getting lucky, but... Okay, so, but... It's still dropping that new line... Yeah. ...in the country variable, because... Yes. Because reasons? <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. Um, yeah, thinking's hard. So, and this is, by the way, break. our last part of the coding. So, while you're thinking about it, I'm just going to start pouring. So, <laughs> it should nothing break for you to listen to when it hits the new line. It shouldn't be adding a new like a new line in because when it realizes this is, so I'm adding it somewhere in here. That's what I don't seem to get. Hmm. So where does the new line come from? You're not adding it yourself, right? No. Okay. That's so how, we're, we're, so we're, how could we're it have gotten early. in there? I mean, if you didn't add it, you didn't write a line that added it. I mean, it could be in the file. It has to be in the file. Yeah. I mean, there's nowhere else for it to come from. So we're copying in that new line we have to be copying it in, right? But that doesn't, I agree with you. It I mean, that's logic sense. is telling us that it has to be. <laughs> but we literally have like a, a... A terminal. Yeah. Yeah. And so... It's a bummer, isn't it? I mean, I can kind of be hacky about it. No, I don't want to. get hacky. You know, the thing about being hacky first is... Let's prove what's happening, right? Because this something's mm -hmm. happening here that we don't expect. Well, yeah. That we don't want, really. <laughs> so how do we prove that? I yeah, mean, that's I, a good way to prove it. Let's see. All right, so 100%. We're getting that new line in there. I mean, we're not getting it anymore, thankfully. How do we know that we weren't getting it earlier? What do you, how do we know we weren't getting it earlier? What? We were. So what about name and ASN? So it looks like we're off by one on our third loop, right? Yeah, somehow. So. So it's still, to me, I'm, I'm struggling with this idea that somehow in the loop. Ah, are you struggling be... with it or is the computer struggling with it? I don't know. I mean, we have a hard fact in front of us. Yeah, I mean, it is it's getting happening. added in. I'm trying to understand how it could be added in with how we've specified the conditions of the loop. Okay, what if we try your same hack, but we apply it to the other variables? 
I that's not a good idea. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but they work. Why would we? Are you sure? No. But they're fine. <laughs> so you mean that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we have proof. Yeah, like the first ones are fine. Right. That was the problem with doing the logic reasoning is that we don't know what it's happening. It's clearly not doing what we expect it to. Right. So maybe there were two new lines in our file or something. Oh. Well, <laughs> that still wouldn't make sense, though. Why? Because it would, when it hit the first new line, it would stop. All right. Well, then you tell me what would be our I next mean, I step. Don't know, no, I don't it... either. I mean, let's let's take it apart. You're you're concerned about it, which is good. We're gonna we're gonna sort this out. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. So I'm gonna execute this thing. We're just gonna go with one. Wait, it's not. It's not. I think that we possibly made an error. I I mean, I know the computer didn't. In, in assuming, <laughs> so... No, but I think we. It's our problem is assuming that it's a new line. Ah. Uh. I don't think it is because. How could we know? <laughs> oh wait, I mean, you're can... theorizing, but I mean, we gotta, we gotta know. This isn't theory. If we put this here, I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, so I'm, I'm setting. I'm not gonna overwrite whatever that is, but we know it's indexed oh. at j minus one. So I'm putting okay. the null byte at J again. So okay. this will give us that, whatever that is. We do know that it takes up one character. Mm -hmm. um, and then... <laughs> Let's new line your comment. <laughs> so it's not a new line. Uh, so something else is there. Is there like a. Uh, I warned you earlier. I warned or... you earlier. Line endings. Yeah, tricky. so we, we yeah, you said we will assume for now that it ends in a new line. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have assumed that. Clearly ends in something else. Um oh, I have an idea. Hold on. One second. So now that I have this. I'm a bad guy, I shouldn't have done that. Let me think this through. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to force it to give me the. Yeah. ASCII of it, right? Good, Good forcing. And so. Aha. 13. What is that? What is that? How do we even know? I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, let's look in the ASCII table. A carriage return. Aha! Okay. So how do you refer to that? Carriage return, the escape sequence. Well, first of all, you could just refer to it as 13. I mean, you now know how to coerce it into its ASCII oh. value. But yeah, fair enough. But there is another way that we could do it. We could say, so you want to add this to line 25 as your terminal condition? Yes. Okay, so line is line i is not equal to new line and line i is not equal to look at you with this tight compact <laughs> carriage return. Okay. And so I'm going to for now I'm just gonna comment these out. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's see. Oh, wait, you have the... No, I, I left it, so it should be broken. 
it should be giving us that space and it's not. It's so not. So I fixed it. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha.